That's pretty true. That's good stuff. Uh, moving on. It's time to talk about, guys, one of the most coveted anime films of all time. <laughs> I've heard about this shit since the moment I started watching anime. People were hyping it up. It is Kanye West's favorite movie. It is Logic's favorite movie because he can't have an original thought, so he decided he was going to be Kanye Jr. And, like, I like Akira, too. And a lot of people like Akira. Like, a lot of nerds. Jordan Peele, big Akira guy. It's, right. uh, it laid the groundwork for a lot of modern film. Not even, like, anime, like, Japanese film. Like, Western film, if you think about it. Right. It's Akira, or Akira. If, but I'm not going to say Akira over and over because that's a lot of effort. <laughs> to say that. Yeah, no, it's Akira. It's a lot of effort to not be racist. It's not. That's not racist. It's being ignorant. There's a difference. Ignorance yeah, is I'm racism. I'm just ignorant. <laughs> Yeah, bro, I'm just lazy and ignorant because I don't want to say Akira over and over and sound like a fucking $3 weeb. <laughs> so we watched Akira. <laughs> oh, boy. Did you watch it subbed or dub? Let's go. Uh, dub. Dub as Wish well. I this had my probably guy. Sh- <laughs> Sorry. What did you say? I probably should have watched it subbed. Excuse me? <laughs> the dub was pretty bad, bro. What the fuck? No, it wasn't. You're it was all right. Ass- <laughs> No, nah, yeah, my boy Johnny was, and Bosch is Canada. It was the way it like. I don't think the the acting for the dub was bad. I think it was how it was worded, how it was kind of worked in, and how it synced up with what the characters were doing. It didn't make sense. You're not gonna hate on Johnny and Bosch. I'm telling you, that's what we're not gonna do. Okay, I might do it. Canada as Johnny and Bosch as Canada was lit. I loved him. Now. Tetsuo could probably could have got someone better for Tetsuo, but that's a whole other argument. You know what I'm saying? I guess. Uh, let's go with the thing that required no plot. For- oh wait, you know what? We gotta do one sentence review of this shit. Oh yeah. <laughs> I forgot we do that segment. You know what I mean? One for two on the day. Uh, then no one, no one gives. You could have brought it up, motherfucker. No, I forgot about it too. <laughs> Ignorant ass bitch. I'm not the one who decided we were gonna do it though. I'm not the one who said, "Yeah, you don't decide nothing with content." Never mind. I'm like, hmm, yeah, save that for off. Oh, man. Any, whatever. What was the last piece of content you made? Exactly. So, our one sense review for Akira. <laughs> My one sense review for Akira is I understand why it's a classic film. Anyone else? That's fair. Uh, I will go. This shit would have hit in the 80s. Um, Person. I feel like I missed the point, sort of. Or no, I didn't miss a point. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. You know Sorry, I, mean. I messed up. Is that the that three cents point? review? <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. I'm just going to put this whole bit in for yours. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> that was going to be a great bit when it's one cents review. It's me and Eli's one cents. It's yours like, wait, hold on. <laughs> um, Eli, Eli's one cents review is actually a sentiment I shared because I want to talk about not the plot first. The animation and music for this was actually was really yeah. fucking good. Oh, it was great. I like the dude grunting you... in my ear. <laughs> Jesus. But, like, if you didn't tell me that this was made in 88, I would have been like, wow, that's, that's that's crazy. Because the animation's super fluid, like, really fluid. And I'd say better than a lot of modern anime, even, in the way the motion is done. The only reason I know it's not modern is because of the art style. Not even, like... The like the uh, the buildings and stuff, but the face like that faces has a very distinct yeah. old manga style. But like the motion was great, the the action was fantastic. The way the buildings crumbled and shit like that. Oh man, that was sweet. And the even the motorcycle battles were cool, which they start off the yeah. show with, or this movie with. Yeah, uh, we get the iconic slide that I told you guys about when we did review. Nope. Uh, very cool, actually. I missed it the first time I was watching through because I was just watching haphazardly. And it's really like a five second scene. It's not very long. Oh, it's, it's not short you can as miss hell. It. You can miss it if you weren't paying attention. But that's why I went back and asked you guys yesterday. I was like, hey, you guys have the timestamp for that? I need to check that. Um, it was pretty sweet, though. Like, the whole beginning motorcycle fight was actually dope as fuck. It was brutal. I didn't expect this, this movie to be that brutal and, like, R rated. Oh, well, they shot that dude down trying to save the kid. And I was like, oh, we, we're just in it. All right. Yeah. Like, yeah, like I was, I was genuinely like, shocked. Yeah, me too. I was like, oh, okay. 
the way that dude was lighting the dogs up too when they were jumping at him. Like, bro, yeah, oh, I, I was, forgot that about was that a tough too. One. I was like, dang, bro, gotta kill the dogs. Yeah, they're about to bite his ass. Like, I'm gonna light those dogs up too. The fuck? I like animals too, but if it's me or them, they gotta go. Like, Jeez. You know what I'm saying? But really, the moment that was like mad brutal to me was when fucking Tetsuo was rolling up on that dude who was on the highway off his bike with that pipe. Camp behind him and just oh, bow, yeah. bashed his fucking head in. I was oh. like, Jesus. That's what was it, evil motherfucker? That's pretty true. <laughs> and it was before the experimentation. That dude was it evil was to the, the whole core. time that dude had something wrong. Yeah, he was he was an evil motherfucker. Canada was just like a goofy motherfucker. Like he was just like a goofball and he was trying to get cheeks by any means necessary. <laughs> hey bro. He was trying to do his thing though. Doing his thing. While he's doing his thing. But yeah, and then like, when the little kid, the little fucking ghoul looking bastard kid, Hasbulla looking dude, showed up. <laughs> Not Hasbulla, and, bro. And blew up Tetsuo's bike. I was like, oh my god, Tetsuo's dead. Bro. I thought he was dead too, I'm not gonna lie. And that was, who that was something. I, I thought for sure. I was like, how the fuck did he survive that? I was like, oh, he's got some superpowers or some bullshit. The first, I'm going to be honest with you, the first hour of this movie, I was yes. like super just not, didn't know what the That's fuck what, was happening. And kind of exactly was like, Exactly how I am. Out. Yep. Me too. And by the second half, I was actually like, hold on a minute. It's kind of cool. <laughs> like, like, like really the first, I was just kind of spacing it. Cause a lot of, not a lot happens in that first hour, except yeah. for setting up the second hour. Yeah. Which is like, I think this movie will be better on repeat watches. Cause then you'll actually want to pay attention to the setup for that second hour. Because I have a lot of questions, but I think this movie's meant to have questions in general. Yeah, probably. So that's probably. probably another thing. I, and that's like another whole point of it. I don't know. I was super invested. I mean, like you said, I was invested for the first, you know, 10, 15 minutes. There was a lot of stuff going on. And then like the 30, 45 minutes after that, I just, yeah, I, I spaced out as well. Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know much of what was going on because like you said it was just mostly set up it was mostly the experiment and having that the prison scene for example like you know all that um and then yeah that last hour for the last maybe 45 i was super into it the last 20 especially the last 20 was like i was like whoa what the fuck i was like yo did i miss something or did this shit just get going real fast i don't know yeah, oh yeah for I sure feel like it, it, it really constant. just did start going uh, cause man, like that first hour was basically like, from what I picked up at least was setting up the world. Really. It was like explaining, you know, this is like a post-apocalyptic kind of world, not post-apocalyptic, but like shit went down and fucked this world up, you know? Yeah. Like for sure. still well, yeah, from, the whatever, bomb. from that world war three. Yes. And it was crazy. Basically they were explaining that Kanye and Tetsuo were like delinquents. They're like motorcycle gang dudes and they're having a gang fight in that first 10 minutes. And that's what that was. Cool. Uh-huh. I was like, okay, I get that. And then the, I thought, because at first I couldn't pick up on it. I was like, are they freedom fighters or not? And because the one girl is like, you know, a revolutionary kind of thing. Then yeah. I picked up later. I was like, oh, okay, she's part of the revolution. These guys are just bozo gang members just doing shit. Exactly. You know I mean? yes. yes. Yep. And then then you start figuring out the experiments that they're doing at Tetsu are because they're trying to like awaken some ancient being or some shit. It was real weird. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. And then basically kind of does trying to hang out with. Kaori, Kaori, one of the two. He's basically hanging out with her and trying to fuck her. Yeah, yeah. And Axel like, gets caught up in this revolution shit that's going down. Pretty much, which which is crazy. And that's pretty much like the entire first hour. Uh, I also mentioned because this scene was kind of fucked up. Was when Tetsuo gets out of the hospital, he breaks out of the hospital, steals fucking Kaneda's bike, mm-hmm. goes out with his girl, and nearly gets her raped. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, I did not expect that shit at all. Like, no, no I was like, that whoa, was, dude. Because like the violence that we started the movie with, I was like, all right, this, you know, whatever. That's that's fine. These things happen. That that scene happened. I was like, oh boy, this is much different. Than yeah, I went I to it was sexual assault, and you know that would have happened if it wasn't for Connie and them showing up to save Tetsuo's dumbass. Mm-hmm. Because he was playing around too much, and those dudes were waiting. There were dudes were waiting for Canada. Really, they didn't mean to get Tetsuo. They were looking for Canada over that gang fight they had. Fucking almost 
fuck Tetsuo up, and Tetsuo's bitch ass. Fuck you, Kaneda. Leave me alone. I don't need saving, bro. Then his girl, who almost got assaulted, fucking sexually assaulted, goes up. Tetsuo, he's like, shut up, bitch. Leave me alone. And he runs away. I'm like, dude. You almost got her assaulted, dog, and you're the one telling her to shut up and running away. Like, you're so dumb. I did not sympathize with Tetsuo very much. Absolutely no, not. Know. And, well, until the end, I guess. One Okay, yeah, the ending, but that's kind of like, that shit's crazy. Like, I would temporize right, exactly. anyone that, that goes, yo, my body's not doing what I'm telling it to do. Help me. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that, that shit's crazy. I, I more particularly met the uh, drinking fountain scene. I don't remember that. You might have to work with me on that one. The drinking fountain scene. I, I can go back. Well, yeah, we can. I'll go back to it. Oh, it's, it happened previously before this, this it, scene. Yeah, it was a flashback. Okay, let me know. Oh, so okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I know. Now uh, I it was just like when they were like in school or whatever in the – whatever it was, I don't remember. And he's getting bullied and stuff and uh, Kane does like, you know, defending his honor basically and like – being like yeah those dudes are bullies but like you gotta stand up to him blah 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 and like he was basically just like the typical yeah i'll stand up for you because you can't stand up for yourself kind of thing yeah and tetsuo that was basically tetsuo's whole arc throughout this whole thing was like he wanted power to stand up for himself finally right that was but his entire plot as a younger kid you know i i sympathize with him but as he grows older i don't you know like yeah, you you're an adult go, bro. Yeah, you're an adult or a later teen or even a mi- mid-teen. Like, you got to do your own thing. But if you're eight, nine, yeah, like, that's fucked. You just not... Well, you also saw this world's pretty brutal, so we don't know, like, the full extent of what was happening to him to make him to get to this point, you know? I agree, yeah. Besides the fact that he was, like, an orphan. Yeah. I also I also do know that you guys probably don't. This is uh, based off a of manga... And the manga is significantly longer than this movie. Yeah, that really? would make a lot of sense. The manga is like, I'll send you guys a picture of it, but it's like super long. And the movie's only like two hours, so they're trying to condense like an entire manga like series into a two hour movie. So there's some stuff that I was curious, like there might be stuff that they're missing here. And that's why like the flavor of the first hour is like lost on us. And we thought it got going quick in the second half because there was more going on than we saw. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, man. But man, let me tell you something. That second half, once Tetsuo got that little cape, <laughs> he, got, he got his little cape and started going crazy on people. Dude, he pulled up to the old bar cape. and he was like, "What's up, man?" He's like, "He's like, hey, dude." He's like, "Yeah, you got money to pay for this?" He's like, <laughs> "I was like, oh shit, he's about to kill everyone." I got these hands. Yeah, he got. I got this mm, fucking telep telepathy telepathic brain powers with to blow up your whole shop. He started fucking everyone up, man. And then, you know, Kanye just got to go fight his best friend, basically. That little showdown think... they had was interesting when they were monologuing to each other. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, the bar scene, I think this was one of my complaints with the dub, is it felt very, like, friendly. Like, it wasn't to the point where it's like, why Why did you kill someone? It was like, no, nah, like, you wouldn't have killed somebody. Like, you didn't do that shit. Like... And I, I get the whole, you know, like, you don't want to believe your friend does it, but, like, it seemed like just regular banter, you know? Whereas, like, your your homie just killed somebody that's right in front of you. Yeah, that shit was, that shit was crazy. Tetsuo was really going wild, the buck wild, and just an insane dude. And Kaneda, Kaneda, is, he, some of the dialogue, yeah, you're right, actually. That's a good point. Some of the dialogue, Kaneda was being a little goofy. <laughs> He was uh, like, he was like, yeah. he was like, fuck you, pussy. Like, he was really like, it's not like they're <laughs> yeah. just having like a friend fun fight. Right. Whereas like, not Tetsuo has his mind power that can blow up the world. It seemed like a, a pickup, like one-on-one basketball game with your friend more <laughs> than like, we're actually trying to destroy or save the world. That's absolutely true. That's what that did. Cause especially the last, I feel like the last 20 minutes, that final scene in like the big stadium looking thing. Yeah. Yeah. When they, it really sent like Kaneda was like an action hero, like quipping at Tetsuo. Yeah, uh, he was like, "Come yeah. on, Tetsuo, <laughs> let's go, bro. <laughs> Fuck you, dude." Until he really started going, you know, till Tetsuo started morphing into the big whatever the fuck he was. Yeah, there was like, "Oh yeah. shit, blob the 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 Titan, or like a Titan from Attack on Titan." I don't even think it was that. They look like a fucking just like a big blob of meat. <laughs> 
It's like, like uh, you're making burgers. You just slap that ground <laughs> beef around the table. It's like uh, you look like fucking Rita uh, from Meat Doom Wad. Patrol. <laughs> yes, oh they look like Rita from Doom Patrol or Meat Wad from Aqua Team Hunger Force. You ever seen that? Like a really uh-huh. big Meat Wad. That's funny. But that shit was interesting, and that shit was actually kind of cool because when Tetsuo started like, "Kanye, yeah. help me! I can't control myself," and all that. He almost killed Kaori and all that. I was like, damn, this is about to get interesting. And it did get interesting, to say the least, because he did some like brain power shit with the little ghoul looking kids. The kids, bro. The kids went crazy. Yeah. Hospulas. <laughs> Not the hospulas, bro. And you found out that uh, Akira was actually a person, or it was a person. It was, yeah. And now he's like these fucking jars of liquid shit because <laughs> yeah. they're trying to preserve him and recreate him. I was right. like, what the fuck is going on? I was so confused. I never really got what Akira really was. Me either. Like from from what I understand, he was like the perfect specimen out of all of them or something. Right. And they so, couldn't like they couldn't tap into it all the way. That's what uh the chick was talking about is like she she took it as Akira is like what's good in people or like the the things that people are good at, like Akira's in everybody. Um I think that's what she said. Okay. At least and it's just kind of like it revolves around the world. It's not, you know, a particular person it's more just nature as one uh but obviously she was fucking wrong so <laughs> <Dead one. laughs> see because of course i just thought that they all treated akira as like a god like as the god basically and so everyone was trying to chase that and everything uh the natural not natural necessarily but the connection that i made was when uh in death note they called light kira because he was right, like yeah. God controlling yeah. everything. I was like, I well, see what they did there. Okay, well, to be fair to you, Kira in Japanese actually like a uh, killer. Interesting. Because you know in Japanese they they fuck up their well not fuck up but like the are the L's and R's sound very similar. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so when they say killer, it'd be Kira. That's where Kira comes from. Now, did I think Akira to to fucking Kira a little bit? Yeah, I did actually. But nothing too crazy because like the I don't know if those two words are similar or not. I don't know. I yeah. don't know Akira versus Kira very much. I, I like, certainly uh, don't. The phonetics and everything. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> but yes, they they. I mean, they're built the same word except for there's one letter. So I'm assuming they're pretty close. So you're not hooked on phonics. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like very much Akira was a lot of symbolism that you could that like humans trying to get to God basically like right. You know, and it made sense with the way they're like, oh yeah, he's underground instead of up in the sky, you know, like shit like that. So I, I very much took like the symbolism out of that. This is a very symbolistic movie. Is that a good word? I would say that's the right word. Yeah, uh, yeah I also I agree so. with you on that. That's a hard word right there. I gotta, I gotta add that to my bag. <laughs> this t- symbolistic. That's solid. Take that one away from today, kids. Symbolistic. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, this movie is very much meant to be interpreted in different ways, and the the actual like in front of you plot is only a small piece of the bigger puzzle, and that's why I said like you can see where the influences of other filmmaking came from with this, because it was like you had two friends who are turned rivals, but they're still friends, and one of the friends just gets corrupted. Like that's a classic trope, you know what I mean? Yes, going all the way back to like Cain and Abel, you know what I'm saying? Like that's a classic, classic trope in writing. And then you get, like, the, the action, the motorcycles, everything like that. It's fucking Hollywood loves them some motorcycles nowadays. Like, everything you see has a motorcycle in it. And every piece of anything you see with the motorcycle does the motherfucking Akira slide. You know what I mean? Because that shit's badass. Like, imagine someone... I don't know. I played 007 as a kid. There was a scene that wasn't, like, a Akira slide where you, like, slide and stop. But there's the one where you, like, turn the bike sideways to go under a semi-truck and then you come back up and keep going. <laughs> now, that shit... That shit was tough as a kid. I was like, oh, that shit was hard. So, like, a lot of the stuff that this movie did is it heavily influences future stuff, and I get why it's a classic. Yes. Some of the things that go on with it don't necessarily make it a super enjoyable movie now. And I think if, I this, if I saw this in 88, it would have rocked my fucking world. You know what exactly. I mean? That's my thing. Even if, as shit, well. even if I saw this in early 2000s, it would have rocked my world. Yeah, absolutely. This movie was crazy. And I feel like to watch, feel like to understand the scope of it, I might have to watch it like one or two more times, which is gonna be hard for me to dedicate that to watching a movie over and over because I have pea brain. But yeah, I say it's definitely hard because I don't know we're we're very oversaturated with content 
especially now in modern age, you know, so we've seen, you know, a lot of stuff, but you know, if it was 88 or like you said, even growing up, whenever I'm not going to date myself, but growing up as a kid, I would have, uh, I would have enjoyed that as well. So. Hell yeah, dude. I think, I think it's definitely worth watching this for us at least just to see where all this shit, like a lot of influences came from. And I yeah. enjoyed it because this was like this was considered cyberpunk. And I, I, interesting. Yeah, that makes sense. I kind of get it, but out okay. of all the cyberpunk we've seen, I think I like this world the best. Cyberpunk wise, because <sighs> it's really just it's not crazy. It's really not. It's not. It's just the architecture changed, and everyone's driving a little like a futuristic looking car. This is like the closest thing we're gonna get to fucking cyberpunk in the future. To yeah. be fair, this was set in twenty nineteen. But it came on 88. That was like 40 years ahead. Like, they did not. We thought we were going to jump a lot further as far as the way the world looked in 40 years than it has. But, you know. Of course. Right. That's what everybody did. But, yeah, you guys got any uh, closing remarks or thoughts about Akira? Uh, uh, I do. Yes. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to go first. Fuck you, Tristan. No, uh, go ahead. We were care. talking I was about. Let you go first. <laughs> We were talking about animation earlier and how stuff flows in. I was going to mention something, but it was kind of at the end, so I didn't want to, you know, <clears throat> spoil anything. But one of my favorite moments from the animation standpoint and why this would look crazy, crazy in the 80s was when uh, Tetsuo gets his arm out of, like, metal and whatever else and it, like, yeah. kind of morphs into his skin. That shit was amazing. Um, and that's when I was like, wow, this is insane animation that they, again, I've seen worse animation now so star wars the clone wars i'm looking at you damn i just hate i i would probably watch the show i probably would have watched the show by now if it didn't have such weird animation i'm not gonna lie to you that's the I only like reason animation. i didn't watch it and then i couldn't because of that so did you guys ever watch the old cartoon the other one the 2003 version which was like 2d nah. instead of 3d hmm. uh-uh. that one was kind of even looked goofier but it was kind of hard i like that one uh, Tristan, you had final thoughts that, that uh, you were trying to say? Yes. Uh, so, very similar to when we watched Edge Runners, I saw this as, like, I saw Tetsuo's plot as someone kind of like an Icarus thing, flying too close to the sun. Like, he got the power, and then he just went absolutely bananas with it, thinking that he was invincible. Uh, and the only problem I really had with with it is again that it just didn't get to play out as long i realize it's a movie and so they didn't really have a chance to do that but i mean we went from he had no idea what was going on with his powers uh but he has powers to him suddenly being able to perfectly control everything and then it basically costing him his life and that was like in the span of about an hour uh and so that's, I, once again, very similarly, I just want it more played out with these kinds of things. I like seeing the degradation of the mind with people who do something like that or are in that kind of situation. I want to see how they slowly start losing, not entirely their touch with reality, but just st slowly start losing their sanity or whatever else it is that causes them to have that issue. That's That's the kind of thing I want out of a plot line like that but other than that i wasn't too terrible. i mean you kind of got it though at the end when his medicine was wearing off and like he morphed into the the super blob yeah a little bit like i i'd argue that's his flying too close to the sun moment because he can't control his powers anymore well yeah that's what i'm saying but like i i needed i wanted it more played out is what i'm saying he wants the middle part more Yes. Not the ending. He wanted more of the middle, basically, like him, the lead up to his moment of transforming into that blob monster. That's fair. Yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like, for me personally, this movie was long enough, unless you were to make, oh, it was. you know, I, I don't know, another one and do that then, which wouldn't really make sense, I'd, or make a show out of it, I guess, which also wouldn't really make sense. I feel like in a two-hour movie, this is the best they could have done with what they did with the first hour. No, I 100% I agree with that, which is why, like, it's not an overly large issue for me. That's just the thing that, that I take note of the most. Uh, 
out of stuff like this in this movie. So that that's all it really was for me. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, probably check out the manga then if you want more. Uh, the manga has a really beautiful box set that I wanted to buy even without having seen the show. Like, the box set looks fucking sick. But, yeah, man. So, we watched Akira. That was that was good. I actually liked it a lot. You guys got ratings for this? Um, I actually give it a really good score. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Oh, wow. Um, <clears throat> I think it's the definition of good for me right now because I just, again... It would have rocked my world earlier, but yeah, it's it gets a seven for me, which I again I feel like is our definition of good. That's fair. Uh, I'm going with a five. Whoa! I didn't. Whoa. I you did not talk like a five throughout this thing. I didn't have many emotions one way or another for this. Like I didn't. I certainly didn't think it was bad. But there was nothing. I mean, besides the animation quality and like just the artwork and stuff that they did for that. There was nothing in this movie that made me think that it was definitely not great, uh, but not even like above average necessarily. Like I, I enjoyed it. So, I enjoyed it. You enough, know, you, but I didn't, you gave kaleidoscope a six, bro. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. We got Simon Cowell over here, ladies and gentlemen, this dude, this dude, totally. Yeah. That's he uh-huh. different. All right. I'm different. Yeah, I'm different. <laughs> uh, if you guys want to attack Chris, and we're going to let you guys know that we have social media to message him <laughs> on. We have a, a Twitter, which is what he primarily uses for all of our communications, which is at B-I-N-G-E-B-O-I-S. That's at Binge Boys, change the Y to an I. We have an Instagram, which Eli controls, so you can go message Eli and tell him how you enjoyed his opinion and not Tristan's at D-A-B-I-N-G-E-B-O-I-S. That's D-A said D because we are dumb asses. If you want to double up and attack Tristan, you can also run the TikTok at D-A-B-I-N-G-E-B-O-I-S. On all of those are running Marvel Madness, a great tournament, which is entering the Elite Eight. Well, the Elite Eight's... It might be done by the time this comes out. That is, uh, if we, we don't into get the shut down. Why, why would we get shut down? Because the government is having these hearings with them TikTok people, and they're trying to get it shut down. We run it on all social media, okay? Still. If TikTok dies, you can find us on Twitter, fucking Instagram, and I think we might have a Facebook. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> I don't know who uses that. We don't even use that, but we have uh-uh. one. Maybe we should. Maybe we should tap into that old people market. Yeah, I'm maybe sure they maybe, love what we have to say. Maybe that's what we're missing. We're missing the old people. Like we review like old shit, like The Godfather and stuff. Like they'll be like, "Oh, I remember this from my old times as a child." That's true. I can't believe that young uh, gave a Akira a five. I watched Akira <laughs> when I was thirty two. <laughs> first came out in theaters. <laughs> Ugh, good times, good times, man. Yeah, so thanks for hanging out with us this week. We had a good time. Reviewed two good things. No more Last of Us, so the episodes get a lot shorter now. That's thankfully. a fact. A lot less thumbnail making, a lot less editing for me. Yay! Um, yeah, that's everything we got to talk about today. We want to remind you guys that with you today, I was Enrique. My name is Eli Still. My name is Tristan. And I want you to remember, the bit is still dead.